May I invite Mr. Kabir Khadr, Chairman of KK Group of Companies. Uh, KK Group of Companies has established itself in petrochemical hospitality and automobiles, in, automobiles industry in the Middle East and the Indian subcontinent. Mr. Kabir, a fellow member of the Institute of Chartered Accountants of India, is a Chairman of Hercules Automobiles in India and a Director of Hercules Group of Companies in the Middle East, engaged in heavy equipment leasing and trading. I now request Mr. Kabir to felicitate the author of the book, Sri uh, T.P. Srinivas.
and Padubi and Ravel, such achievements that have that leave us spellbound. And today I have the honor to felicitate <coughs> Mr. Srinivasan, a, a distinguished diplomat, and share with you his success and high points of accomplishments. Elaborating it may take the whole evening and night, so I'm not going to go for that. I would just come with the most complete part of it. As most of you know, Mr. C. P. Srinivasan joined the IFS in 1967 after giving an academic record and being a rank holder. He joined the Indian Foreign Service in 67 through a highly competitive civil service examination with a brilliant record, having stood first in the university examinations of Kerala and bachelor's as well as master degrees. During his 35 years of diplomatic assignment in various posts, from third secretary to ambassador, in various countries, he has many things to share involving the negotiation skills, the administration skills, and the policy formulations. Now, let's look back a little bit the beginning. In order not to lose the kick of it, I would like to read what he has written in the books. Imagine a boy born in a village with no electricity, whose playground fed paddy fields, flooded in certain seasons, and dry in others, whose toys were made out of coconut leaves and used bicycle tires. Subsistence farming ensured that there were plenty of food, but not much else. He had one pair of clothes for the school and a topless outfit the home, either a tattered pair of shorts or a coarse loin coat. That's when the challenges magnify out of proportion. He walked to school through slippery, narrow tracks in the field, rain or shine, and that with the help of kerosene lamp. His ambition was only to do well in class, with hardly any competition in a village school. What guided him was a dream that his father had, that he should conquer the world, not just be the best in the state of India. The widest horizon he could visualize was the foreign service, a magic band he thought that would transform a village boy in their club product. His father's dream became his own, though he did not know what it meant or how to accomplish, but he toiled on from school to college in frustration and excitement in failure and victory. From this what I understand, TP has proved here that he is an open book which many people would not like to do it. That's what I'm happy about. It. And I also wonder after reading his childhood, I think he depicts my childhood as well, as it is not too far from it. Maybe with a small change, he had better food and better house to live. Now, all work and no play make Jack a dull boy. And this, uh, the same applies to Mr. Srinivasan, who adds spicy humor. You have heard many of his uh, humorism in the last uh, uh, last hour by, uh, from various uh, uh, speakers. Uh, by describing in his writing that he says, God's own country is ironically changed to God's own country, as explained, I think he was referring to uh, the billions of dollars worth of gold kept in the walls of the Sri Padmanabhaswami Temple in Kerala. So, but he did not leave the brides either. And excuse me if the ladies, if I'm offending you. He writes in his book, depicted by the head to throw encapsulation of gold on the brides is compared with an elephant decked from top to bottom with gold decoration during festivals. He has used this format to depict the culture, reality in the world outside. And his constructive criticism adds great value to the reader. His progressive outlooks compels the reader 
through a mindset change which he can pave the way for growth and development. The fabric of his career is sequined with being a brilliant negotiator, <coughs> an exceptional <coughs> diplomat, a role model for the youth, courageous, a true leader, and a humanitarian, just to name a few. All this I shared seems like a fairy tale, and all what we could see is <coughs> is the icing on the cake. Now let me conclude. His valuable insight in religion, politics, mythology, diplomacy, etc. He has knitted together to enlighten and enrich the reader. And you will feel it, as Doctor has said, unput downable once you start with it. It is an educational therapy which he has scripted together to the benefit of the society and I wish him the very best of his and all his future endeavors. Thank you very much. Thank you Mr. Kabir Kadir.